You see that Paul went to Syria, then he went to Macedonia, then he went to Ephesians, Ephesus. All that is in the Middle East. And that's where they had their ministry starting at. That's where the Christianity in that area started at. And one of the things I like to discuss is that they had something called Aphrodite, which was a witch or a goddess, and they used to worship the stars and the storm, the stars, the stars and the sky and the moon and all that other stuff. And what what in the book of Acts what happened was that they told the apostle Paul to leave them alone. See, he had the power and the Holy Ghost to say, wait a minute, that's wrong. That's not of God. That's not how we should go. But they told them and compelled them to say, you cannot do that. Even though you know it's wrong, even though you know it's right, you got to let people do what they want to do or else they will destroy you. They will hurt you. Yeah. So he wanted to go there and stop them from doing their evil, but he couldn't because he realized there's more of them than there is of me. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to change, I might as well just leave them alone. So he went to Macedonia. He went to another place and taught there. Not saying that he was afraid. It was just that with wisdom, sometimes you don't have to go tell people what they're doing wrong and try to convince them that the way they're living is wrong because they want to be that way. It would have did more harm than good if he would have kept on going. Mm -hmm. Or he could have been killed or destroyed or hurt if he would have kept on going because that was a stronghold. It's like a stronghold of witchcraft where they do all kind of witchcraft and evil and, and they, people are telling you, don't bother us, leave us alone, don't come here. And you still come, then you just disrespect uh -huh. their wishes. You can't force yourself on people, even though you feel that it's, it's the right thing to do. You can't force yourself on people. You shouldn't force yourself on people. And that's what he did. He moved back. He let it be. Somebody else went and did what they had to do. And, you know, I was discussing. That's probably why I was up last night. I couldn't rest. I was thinking about something that people say on uh, social media when I posted about me being a Taurus or me having an astrological sign. And many people was like, oh, that's witchcraft. We Christians can't um, use that or indulge in that, which is fine for you to believe. It's okay for you to believe that. But if you read history, all mathematic equations, all understanding of north, west, south, east, was all done by the stars. So they knew how to travel to find the east, west, north, or Jerusalem, or Jesus by following the star of David, the star of Bethlehem. Isaac Newton, they all had to use the universe for us to understand math itself came from the stars or the planets. Amen. So astrology is the beginning of wisdom for all things to be in existence. And people don't understand that part. They don't know that in the 1700s, 1300s, 1400s, that, that Isaac Newton and the rest of them had to use astrology to, be, to understand how this world works. They use a telescope to look up in the atmosphere and to see what alignments were where. And this is why we got these names like the, the Great Dip or the, 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 the Milky Way. And those are all things that came from astrology. So astrology is the beginning of knowledge that begins with education. All education came from astrology. The astronomers use that as a way to learn about metric system. That's how the metric system came about. That's how we knew uh, uh, how far is the distance from the moon, how far is the distance from the west, how far is the distance from the south. That's how we get distances, feet, measurements. They all came from astrology. So even though some people don't like astrology, it's what started the whole basis of education. And that's how we did it in the beginning of the, 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 the Word of God. It all started from that. 
So some people don't know that history, so they just jump on what their father told them or their brother told them yeah. or their mother told them, and they feel it's all bad. But no, that's math. That's really math. That's how things really started. So that was what's keeping me up, and I wanted to share that with everybody that can hear me. But we're going to talk about uh, steps into your harvest for Sunday school. And we're going to talk about the book of Ruth, chapter 2. Step into your harvest because sometimes people don't understand that we have harvest that we need to step into. You need to step into it. You, they don't just come to you. Harvest didn't just drop in Ruth's lap. She had to go. Naomi had to go. They had to travel <laughs> for the harvest. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We can see in there that if you praise right, you can have a good harvest. So, here we go. Harvest is in your praise. Harvest is in your praise. How are you praising the Lord? How are you praising God to get the harvest? Amen? Amen. Amen. Ruth, chapter 2, who got it? I want people reading now. Luke chapter 2. If you praise right, you can have a good harvest. If you reap right, you can have a continuous harvest. Remember we talked about how to harvest a, a corn or, or, or fruit or, or certain things? You have to hit it, but not all the way to the root. Because if you destroy the root, it won't grow no more. Anybody found root? I got it, yes. Could somebody read it, please? Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. You don't have to stand. You can sit there and read it. Okay. okay. This is Sunday and school. Naomi had a, king, a king's man of her husband, a mighty man of wealth, of the family, of Emelie. All right, don't worry. And his name was Boaz. And Ruth the the Mo and Ruth the um, Moabites Moabites said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him. In whole sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. All right, let me. That's good right there. Uh -huh. So when you look at the corn and the fields, that's harvest. And if you wanted to harvest the grain or the corn, you couldn't chop it too far from the bottom. Amen. You had to break it and the other piece, the stem had to stay so that it could keep growing. And that's the same thing with work with wisdom. You can't just destroy the speaker. You have to let the speaker keep on teaching so that you could grow more. Oh, yes. You see? Yes. So, so they learned in an early age how to weep a harvest so they may survive. And listen to verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn. So what she was doing was going into the fields to glean ears of corn, but she wasn't necessarily trying to get corn. She was trying to get a person to marry to take care of her and her family. Many people harvest wrong, or they harvest for the wrong reasons. Yes. But she knew in her heart, and Naomi said, okay, go my daughter. And she went and came and cleaned in the field of, after the reapers, and her heart was too light on a part of the field belonging to somebody named Boaz, who was the kindred of Emiliac. And behold, boys came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless thee. 
Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? Wow. Now this is, is tricky because this lets you know there had to be a special way she was gleaning. There had to be a special way she was reaping. There had to be something about her that made Boaz pay attention to her work. So in other words, he's like, who is this? Otherwise, somehow she's doing it better than everybody else. She's, she's gleaning better than everybody else. She's breaking it the proper way. And she's putting it in the piles that it should be fluently. So how you glean and harvest is important to ministry. You can't just go out there and think you're going to get people in with being rude and mean. Mm -hmm. If you want to reap people, you got to reap people with love, joy, kindness, peace, understanding. You know, you got to talk a good talk with them. They want something to believe in. And she showed them something that was good. Something that was desirable or important to look at. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens with, 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 when you have the right people to instruct you. She had the right people to instruct her, which is Ruth. She told her what to do. She even told her, if you read further into the story, she said, when he come, lay next to him. And she would explain him how to win over this man, so that he could help you continue to be a blessing. And then the, the, the story went on to say how they found out, like the demons find out something bad about her, and then they went and told that she used to be a, 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 a witch or used to worship a goddess and wasn't a Jew, and, and then they tried to, but it didn't work out. But you got to be careful because people are jealous of how you weep and your harvest. But keep doing it. Amen. Don't let your past stop you from doing something to benefit you and your family. So when somebody instructs you, you can be a good worker for the kingdom of God. But you need training. Mm -hmm. You need training. She had to tell her where to go, what to do, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, nobody want to learn how and what and where to do anything. Everybody want to just do what they want to do and forget about everybody else. That's not how it should be. That's not how God intended it to be. He intended for us all to get instructions. Because anybody can yell. Anybody can jump. Anybody can hope. Anybody can make you feel good. But are you really learning? it? Are you really being instructed on how to reap benefits for you and your family and all your friends. So you're not just a blessing for yourself. You're not just a blessing for your family, but you're also a blessing for your friends and neighbors. That's important. To be a blessing for your friends and neighbors, not just yourself. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1, let's go there. We still in Sunday school. 1 Corinthians 3, Sunday school started a little late, but to God be the glory. God is on top. He knows what he's doing. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I pray, and I pray, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now ye are able to bear it, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is strife, ain't that something? And division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one said, I am poor, another I am Apollos, say ye not carnal when this is poor, and who is Apollo? But ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. 
I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is that planted anything, neither he that watereth anything, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his or her own reward according to his and her own labor. So don't think for a minute somebody could take your harvest. Mm -hmm. Your reward will be given to you according to your labor. Don't think somebody's going to get your benefit from your labor. It was told to me many times that somebody will take your prize. And all you work for, somebody could take because uh, you might live wrong or you might make a mistake or then they could stay. No, 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 no. What you work for is yours. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said. The Bible said, shall receive his own or her own reward according to his or her own labor. It never said it will be taken away. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Look at that. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth yeah. thereupon. So here it is. One person start and everybody else built on, on top of what was started. Not tear down what was started, but build on it. So if you see my harvest Flourishing, your job is to build to keep it flourishing, not to destroy it or take it down. And that's where people err at. Everybody's like, they say crabs, grabbing everybody and pulling them all down yeah. instead of building on top of each other. Mm -hmm. You did like with David and Saul. You built, you killed 5,000, I killed 10. Thank God we got 15. Instead of you getting upset trying to kill me because I did 10. No, we should work together and get all the people that are against God and destroy them. Instead of saying who did more. When we all are going to get rewarded no matter how much we do. I'm going to get my reward. You're going to get your reward. So why would you try to destroy my work? That doesn't make sense. Why can't we just glean and harvest together? They didn't say, uh, 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 Naomi, get out the field. Ruth, get out the field. No, he even made it so to the point where Boaz said, this is yours. Do this yourself. And nobody bothered her. Even though they wasn't bothering her. Because they seen her in the field. They didn't know who she was, but they still let her drink. They see you in the ministry. They, see you in the, they don't bother you because they still let you do your work. Nobody should suppress somebody else from doing the work of God. Nobody should stop somebody else from doing the work of God. It's your harvest time. You need to go out there and reap your harvest. But you can't let somebody say, don't do it. You got a right to reap harvest. And now we're going to take it a step further. Your harvest don't necessarily have to always be peace. You can reap your own harvest, which is joy, love, tranquility, understanding, devotion, ministry. That's your harvest too. I want to reap the good benefits of the fruits of the Spirit. Reap that too. And how do you reap that? By leaning off of somebody that has it. My God. You can't glean off of somebody that got an empty field. You got to go to somebody that got a full hey, field hey, so man. you can get something to glean from. Hey, How man. can you glean from somebody that don't got <laughs> nothing to glean from? How can you get that? That's why I'm here. How can you get that? How can you get the understanding hey, of again. how to do things if they don't have nothing to give you? Say it again. It doesn't make sense. That's why Boaz seen her dedication yes. in harvesting. Wherever, I like that part. Yeah. Wherever he put her, she worked it. No complaint. My Lord. No argument. Yes. And just did what she had to do. Even when they tried to destroy her and kill her, mm -hmm. she still said, 
He had nothing to do with this. I was the one that did wrong. Yes, Chaka did, and he stepped in for her. But she took responsibility of her past life. That's why I say you cannot bury your past life. If you got something in there that's not right, fix it. Yes, that's right. Because it will come back to bite you. Yes, it will. You better fix it. Okay, This is a harvest scripture that deals with jealousy. Do not be jealous over other people's harvest because it is, it is God that makes your harvest great, mm -hmm. not no one else, but God. So if you don't have a great harvest, Glory be to God. My Lord. That's the problem in ministry. Go ahead. Too many jealous folks. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. Cut the jealousy out. Okay. Oh my God. There's no need for it. Oh my God. I'm prospering. You're not at the moment. All right, one day you will. Yes. Just be thankful for where you're at. Bless right. name. The Bible said be content in all things. Right. A base, when you have nothing, when you have a lot, then you still be humble. Yes. Be happy. Be content. Go ahead, happy. With whatever harvest you reap right now, mm -hmm. it may be more next year. Yes. Just because your fields ain't blooming as much as somebody else's doesn't mean you need to destroy theirs. Oh, God, have mercy, man. Oh, true, God. God, Jesus. Right. And that doesn't mean you need to argue with them about theirs. Yeah. Oh, and this is something that might get a lot of people up war, but not all the time because somebody have a little harvest, they did something wrong. Mm. I had little for a long time, but I was happy and content Amen. because I knew one day, my day will come. Mm. Amen. My day will come. I never got mad at somebody else that had a lot. Mm -hmm. I just said, I'm going to keep working till God give me mine. Hey, God. And God bless you with yours. Yeah. But never did I ever say, oh, man, y'all got that wrong. Y'all did this, y'all did. No. No animosity, no jealousy, no deceit, no anger. I just give God the glory that you're prospering. Yes, okay. And then I learned from the Bible. I always learn from the Bible. Remember? Joseph, Pharaoh had that dream. What Joseph said? Yes. It's going to be a famine. Mm -hmm. Seven years of plenty, yeah. seven years of lack. Let's keep all our, all our stuff or money in chamber or our grain and wheat because it's going to be a famine. So let's build it up. And then when the famine comes, we're not just going to take care of ourselves. We're going to bless the whole world. So they had enough for their Egypt, and then they had enough for his family. Mm -hmm. Joseph's family came and got fed, and other nations got fed, and other nations got fed, because they was not greedy to say, forget about y'all. Y'all didn't store up y'all treasures, so now y'all got no harvest. I got it all. <laughs> no, they didn't. They shared their harvest with other people, because if you read your Bible, it's going to come a time when they're going to need them. Mm -hmm. And it happens. So you got to always have a ram in the bush. You got to always have somebody because one day you're going to need that same somebody Amen. that you thought had nothing to help you. Amen. That's why the Bible says be careful how you entertain strangers because you entertain angels unaware. Mm -hmm. And that stranger may have the key to your eternal life. Like we said in chess, every pawn is a potential queen. Be careful with the pawns because they will become mighty one day. Don't underestimate them. And because they can't go but one, one step at a time, doesn't mean they won't get to the queen. To the queen. God is what makes our harvest great. So if you want more love, if you want more peace, if you want more understanding, if you want more devotion, hang around people that got it. But remember, God gives it as he will. Mm -hmm. right. The Bible says, add to your faith patience, and to your patience love, and to your love hope. Mm -hmm. You got to add it. But you got to be around the people that have it. 
You can't add love to people that don't love. How you gonna get it? You can't add joy to people that don't have joy. How you gonna get it? If the blind leave the blind, they both on a ditch. You can't go with them. Don't say I'm gonna leave them alone because they don't have it. I'm gonna just be around people that have it and you still be part of it. Because I love it. I love it. Because what I have may trickle down on you. And that's the key. Being able to bless other people with what you have. Never get so big in your ministry that you cannot help pull somebody else up. But remember what I taught y'all when I became bishop. You could go out into the deep and you could bring the people out of the deep, but don't let them pull you in and keep you in the deep. Why? Jesus. That was what he told me before I became the bishop. He, the Lord showed me that. He said, you could go out there and you could cash your net, but don't let the net pull you in. So when you go out there, come back the same way. Come back the same way. And that's what's the that's what's the problem with people now. They don't understand it. They don't realize that. So that's what we're doing in in, in chapter three of First Corinthians eleven. It teaches us that. It tells us that. For other for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Remember. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Everything that you do or build has to be done or built through Christ. Nothing can be done or built through yourself. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Everything has to come through Christ. Nothing can come through yourself. He's in charge. He's the chief cornerstone. And it's your job to make sure you ask him what he can do or give you. Yeah. Because it's God that makes you great, not man. Matthews 9, 36. We still in Sunday school. We got a few more minutes. Matthew 9, 36. Amen. Mm -hmm. We got these people that are still mad at me for the till the day. I don't know why. I never did nothing to them. But they say they hate me. Every time they see me, they hate me. Every time they hear my name, they hate me. Every time they every time they 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 they, they see me on faith, they hate me. Okay, you want something good. And I'm like, why I don't even that didn't bother the person. Doing the Lord's work. But they say something, every time they hear me, it cringe in their spirit. It cringes in their jealous. Let it bother. Matthews chapter 9, 36. I'm looking at that like, really? Let it bother. Uh, how, can, how can you say that about me? No, ain't no party to hell. Matthew chapter 9, look at verse 35. We must have power in the understanding of God. Amen. And that God is no respecter person. Amen. And this is the thing that happens to a lot of people that gets upset. We got to remember. We can't get upset because David, he said the same person I eat with is the same person that's my enemy. Yes. Even with Jesus, he said the same person I dip my head mm -hmm. is the one that's going to betray me. So you cannot be upset. You got to say, wow, how all of a sudden you just switched up in a minute and start hating me when we were so Yeah. Cool. We went to war together. Now all of a sudden, I'm your worst enemy. I ain't even nothing to you. Just, all the time. just, 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 just why? All the time. And then God said, Don't worry about it. Mm. That happens in ministry. Mm -hmm. It happens in ministry for no reason. <laughs> I don't profess to be better than nobody. I don't profess to be gladder than nobody. But to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Jesus never got upset. He knew what Judas was doing all the time. Mm -hmm. He said it to the Lord. He said, Then I chose you twelve, and one of you is a devil. My Lord. Mm -hmm. We wonder sometimes why people do that. Why they come? Why they sit? Mm -hmm. 
Why they get upset? For what reason? Hmm. And then look what Jesus said. He said, how did you let Satan into your heart? My Lord, come on now. Judas, go do what you have to do quickly. But listen to the key words here. How did you let Satan into your heart to betray me? Mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Lord, and when you realize it's not your fault, mm -hmm. hallelujah, anyhow. anyhow. I didn't do it. You yeah. opened the door where Satan came in and made you my an enemy of me for no reason. No reason. But uh, you let him in. Uh, Who would wish you to believe a lie? Uh, and then you go try to tell everybody else how bad I am and they already know I am not. But they will not talk up. Mm -hmm. So you're just as bad because you won't say, stop it. Stop talking about him like that. Stop feeling that way about him like that. He's not that bad of a person. I know, Bishop, you shouldn't. But instead of you doing that, you like, yeah, mm -hmm, that's right. Yep, mm -hmm, he ain't nothing. Mm -hmm. But then when I come around, you smile in my face like, <laughs> yeah, you know, he said, a bunch of foolishness. But God shows it all right through the journey of the spirit what's going on. And I pray for you that you come back into the Lord and let the animosity, the anger, and the hate go because that can help you get into heaven. You gotta pour that out. You gotta find out what it is that makes you angry. <laughs> because you will always be stagnated if you hate him or not like him, your brother or sister. You got to let that go. You cannot work for the kingdom of God if you don't let that go. You can't tell me you were this and that in ministry and you still hate me. You got to be a fool. How can you love God who you never seen and hate your brother who you ate with and drunk with and sat with and prayed with and laughed with every day? Go ahead. Foolishness. Yes, my Lord. So you will never lay your hands on me. Ah, uh, my God. Never pray on me. Mm. Okay, next up, something. Uh, you never did in the beginning. Yes. But I wouldn't let them do that anyway. Matthew 9, 36. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest is truly plenteous. But the laborers are few. <laughs> Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Yes, Lord Jesus. Okay. People come to help you that will never pray yeah. to be with you. Yeah. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. Because just because they whip you does not mean they want your harvest to flourish. Right. Some people are with you just to destroy mm -hmm. your heart. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. And it can't be done unless you allow it to be done by not knowing their purpose. You need to know the purpose of the person that's laboring with you. Know them that labor amongst you. You need to know. You cannot tell me somebody could sneak up and swim you out of everything and you didn't know about it. No, you need to do some homework. Search it in. Search the heart and the mind of the person that wants to help you. Where is this coming from? Where is this coming from? I sit there and I see a lot of different things and I just give it to God. Yes, yes, yes. And then God give you a person that's supposed to be on your side, that's supposed to be helping you, and they're not doing their job. Mm -hmm. And you say, Lord, didn't you say this people was supposed to support and help and then do and do and this? And he said, yeah, but then, Lord, they're not doing it. That's not your concern. Right. Your job is to keep doing the work 
They'll come around if they don't think God will deal with them. But they are supposed to be helping you, but they're not. That's their fault. Amen. You keep going. Amen. You keep working. You keep doing it. Amen. And don't let that deter you <laughs> from your work. <laughs> this is why we got to get the harvest wet. Because people, I hear people talk about the harvest and the laborers and the plenty, but I have never heard them say it so eloquently like this. Mm. To where we can realize that it's more than just harvesting vegetables, corn, people. We can harvest fruits of the spirit for ourselves, for our bounty, for our treasures. Mm. I, all my life I've never heard people tell me I can harvest that stuff. I can have my storehouse full of love and tranquility and peace. That's the past all of that. Why didn't they tell me that could be in my storehouse? But the Lord, except the Lord build the house. You got to seek the Lord. Because like he said in the Apostle Paul said, he is the foundation that we build upon. And many people in ministry are not building upon the foundation of the word of God. They just building upon themselves. Amen. Near scripture. <laughs> to back up anything they're doing. Go ahead. But because they feel like they should do it, go ahead. they go, go ahead. on and do it. Right. And it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And, so God and then somebody that does build on a firm foundation, they get angry because that foundation won't be moved. So that's what the problem is. You don't like me because my foundation won't be moved. Amen. 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 Because you couldn't shake the foundation. You couldn't move the solid rock. So now you hate me. Because what you came out to do you could Jesus. not do because of the power of the foundation that was built on God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. That's why the glory cannot go down mm -hmm. because it's built on the cornerstone of the word of God. It was spoken into existence and built upon by scripture and anointing and prayer. Amen. When ministry is built on the power of God and revelation knowledge that was spoken by God, it will never go away. And then it was built continuously on the power and the spiritual anointing of God. Everything had to do with the Bible. Every part of our ministry has to do. If, the, if it doesn't say Bible, it will not be done. And this is where we at in Sunday school. A lot of people don't know that in order to do a good harvest, you got to have a good foundation. Like the man of God said, this is the launching pad. Mm -hmm. It's also a fixing pad. So when the, look at the launching pad. Mm -hmm. When the plane needs to divert and has a need to emergency land, It'll come here. Amen. To be fixed. Right. And back out. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Because this is the firm foundation. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to destroy the foundation, but they can't do it because it's already established on the principles of God. Amen. Remember the Lord said he looks for a house that's built, yeah. not made by hands, but by the principles of Father God, yeah. this is the place. It's built on the principles of God, mm -hmm. not man. That's why we're living in a supernatural age where nobody has ever sold that into here where they can say they did this. Mm -hmm. Not one person out of our nine years could ever say they gave over $500 or $1,000 to this man. Barely got fifty dollars. You ask somebody for three hundred, oh no. But he still survived nine years. Why? Because it was built on the anointing of God, not on a man. 
So if yeah. man would have built it, then it wouldn't survive because man did not sow. But because it was built by the anointing of God, we did not need yeah. a man to yeah. sow for it to stand. Because it was built by the word of God. And the word of God does everything else. Amen. Yeah. That's why they can't withstand the power mm. in this ministry. And this was told to me in 1995. You're going to stand before giants that will never knock My you. God, my God. People are going to be amazed by the wisdom that you have to speak. And they're not going to like you because they cannot withstand the power my of God that's God. in you. Jesus. As sure as you are. Girl. Jesus. Little yes, my God. Move mountains. Look at God. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, With the Lord. knowledge that surpasses mm. all mm. understanding. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's why there's a few chosen here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Because that's keeping the foundation solid. I might not see Minister Raymond. I might not see uh, Minister uh, uh, Shaw, but they still holding me up. They ain't never let these hands down. So you might not see them, but they still holding me up. See, you got to understand in ministry, you have people on your side that may never come, but they still on your side. Because you know they are. You got to believe they are. And what you say, yeah. you get. So if you say they never, they're not doing you no good, yeah. what's well, going to happen? Mm -hmm. But if you speak positive, yeah, yeah. you shall have whatsoever you Amen. say. Amen. Spiritual principles is what this foundation is built upon. You got to speak the spiritual words for it to work. And yeah. people are not speaking those words. They speaking everything else but the word of God. They just jumping and shouting and hocking. <laughs> And spitting everywhere. Oh, and when a trial come, down they go. Oh, pray for me. I don't know what to do. I done lost this. I done jump off the roof. No. Oh, no. You should know I'm the Lord that gives you yes. the desires of your heart. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. How did you get up from that? But that's right. harvest. Harvest. Yeah. Is, is understanding how to reap the benefits that are given to you. And it doesn't have to always be money. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. It could just be health. That's right. Oh my God, Jesus. Rockefeller. Yes. I would give all my money just to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Jesus. I would give everything I am just to live holy. Mm -hmm. Money ain't the issue. Yeah, right. God is. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. The Bible says it's not by might, but nor by power, but by my spirit. If you harvest with the spirit of God in your life, you can never go wrong. You harvest with the spirit of God, nothing can stop you. Nothing. Though it may dry up now, it will spring up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I know by the Spirit of God, my God bring alive dead things. Remember mm -hmm. I told you that? Mm -hmm. Remember I told you about dead things? Mm -hmm. God loves dead things. He loved dead things so he could bring it alive. Mm -hmm. He loved dead things. Mm -hmm. Remember last time died? Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah, I'm glad he died so I can show you I can bring him back to life. Mm -hmm. I'm, if, a, if a seed fall in the ground, if it don't die, it can't grow. If it dies, it grows. So God loved that thing. He quickened spirits. He quickened Jesus Christ. He loved Jesus. Christ. He said it pleased him that his son died. So he could bring him back up and show you that he has more power over life and death. My Lord Jesus. God, thank you. That's how you weep. By understanding the laws of the power of God. You need to be devoted to God's work 
and God's sowing and reaping laws in order to reap a good harvest. Joel 3.13. Yes. I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I got to get out of close on this. But let me. Joel 3.13. I'm going to tell you this. I've learned from further, further than ministry and open ministry that when I first started, I told you about my, my nickels and when I went out to a, uh, outside, I found the quarter, I put in the offering, then I found 50 cents, then I found the dollar, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how. Sowing and reaping is real. Yes, it is. Yes, it and is. your harvest comes from your reaping, from your sowing. And I sow all the time. And this is something. I sold into a ministry a thousand dollars. They never sold it back. Mm -hmm. They never sold five hundred back. Jesus. Just to see what would they do if I could sow into your ministry a thousand? Why can't you sow a little bit? But I was—I just wanted to see right. nothing, not a devil. <clears throat> they got upset, and I wouldn't sow no more. Looking at me like, oh, where's the rest of the money? You used to sow a lot. But that so the following tax season doubled. Just like with when people was passed away, you sow your 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 money to, to, to help them, and then you get back triple of what you and it happens. So I'm a true witness of sowing yes. and reaping. Everywhere I go, I give. Yes. Because I know the Bible says, plant your seed upon many waters, mm -hmm. and you will receive it from all over the place. Amen. So if I plant seed everywhere, I'm going to get seed back everywhere. Yeah. Then I have another pastor say, you got to be careful where you sow your seed, because you sow the dead soil. And uh, you got your, I know we, if I sow the dead soil, it's going to come alive. Mm -hmm. Hello, because I'm bringing life. So if I'm sowing into something dead, it's going to wake up. I'm going to sow life into that dead soil, and it's going to prosper and bring me some harvest. Because I believe God will do it for me and to prove to them you're no longer dead. That's my belief. They don't believe that, but I believe that. I believe that everywhere I sow, I shall reap a harvest. Regardless how bad you are, I'm going to leave. Because I sow it out of love. And God will give me the increase. Not you. But God. Well, it might not come back from you. But it will come back. Because God right. said it will not return void. Yes. That's right. Whatever you do. Whatever you say. Will not return void. As long as you say it. If the authority and the scripture to back it up. Cast your seed upon many waters and you receive it from you don't know where it comes from. And I have sold it. Yes. Many places. Yes. And I never lacked. Mm -hmm. Never lacked. And I'm still not lacking. Yes. I refuse to lack. And if I do lack, I still won't lack. Because I won't say it. Because yeah. I believe everything is content and prosperous. When I'm in, when I'm at zero, I'm still prospering. Because I know who God is. My Lord. I don't look at the bank. I look at God. Amen. Don't look at the numbers. Look at God. Mm -hmm. I don't look at the people. Look at God. Those are what he wants y to, you to hear today. And this is the encouragement that he wants you to keep in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And this is how he wants you to share with other people. Stay happy. Stay joyful. Help them be joyful. Help them be happy. But when you sow, don't automatically think it's coming back from that person you sowed into. Amen. Because Amen. it's showing up there. It's, it's coming from somewhere else. <laughs> it came from somewhere else. Show, but it's showing up there. It come from the same person. No so appreciation. I'm like, whoa. It ain't even. It don't work I'm like that. Like, I'm, I'm no. like, really? No. But it didn't. And even when you ask them, they don't have it. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Not asking for it back, but because I'm in need right now. But Okay, fine, but God is good. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I did it out of love mm -hmm. and out of an experiment. Because the Bible said, prove me now. Mm -hmm. That I open up and pour you out of heaven, you never, never will see it. Test me. So I proved it. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And I'm still prospering, even though they never did it. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. My life doesn't depend on you. <laughs> it doesn't. It depends on God. You tell us and that. the Bible. Yes. So as long as I line up with Scripture, the Bible said precept Can't upon precept, line upon line, word upon word, here no dealer. Just keep it that way. And like you said, you can't go wrong, Minister. When God is in charge, you can't go wrong. That's the Sunday school for today. I know we came early and we had to listen to our pastor and speak his word. Amen. But to God be the glory. And we thank God for that. Everything Amen. is good.